Good day, everyone. Just as I promised that we will be having lecture videos on the course content SSE 103, which is titled Social Studies Education and Nation Building. We look at the theories, the problems, and the prospects, okay? And we, let's quickly go through the content. Now, the first one is many of Social Studies Education. I told you before, there's something you can talk about the definition of social studies education without, without looking at what exactly is social studies itself, okay? And I told you before that there is no generally defined definition of social studies. We can only come up with a concept that we can see encompasses the key keywords of other people's definition, okay? So when you are defining social studies, you should be open to considering other people's views as well. Like according to Mr. Sam, he says that social studies is this, is this, is this. According to Mrs. Whatever, Miss, 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 Mrs. Sosopressin, he said she said social studies is this, is this. Then generally speaking, we can see social studies ahead, then you are making sense, okay? Not that you would pick an individual's definition of social studies and you assume that you, you've been able to encapsulate what social study implies. Now let's look at different definitions of social studies as given by nine scholars, okay? Number one is by Eddie Yang and Mezzobi. They see social study as a toolbox, okay? Equipped with various tools, that is, to help individuals navigate the environment effectively, solving complex problems for better living. Basically, that says they are seeing they are seeing social study as a mechanism through which you sustain yourself in the society. A mechanism, a strategy, a tool, a skills, competencies that help you see through your society. Anything that helps you to navigate through your society, that is what they see as social studies. The kind of culture they imparted in you that made people like you in your society, that's social study. The kind of skill that you're able to, to have that makes you appealing to people within your society, what's the kind of the kind of concepts that, that you 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 uh, the kind of let me say the characters that you're able to portray that makes people see you as part of them. That is what they see as social studies. Okay. Osaku on the other on the other hand sees social study as is akin to a web connecting human beings in different rules and interactions within your society. That is what connects is just like we have different dots. We have this family here, we have this family here, we have this family here, we have this family here. So what Osaku sees as social studies, the, the very thing that is connecting this family with this family, connecting this family, this food. So that web connectivity is what he sees as social, I mean social studies. So what is connecting one person with the other, connecting this human being with the other, connecting this family with this family, connecting this church with this mosque, connecting this tribe with this tribe, connecting this this race with this race, that is what is this as so, social studies. Anything that is interconnecting human beings. Now these human beings can be different from, they can be from race, they can be by tribe, they can be by, by skin color, they can be by by speech, I mean by the language they speak, they can be by anything, by, by the social class and all of that. But anything that connects them together, that's the reason it is as a web connecting human beings. Now, represented by figures in different rules and, and interactions with anything that makes them interrelate. That's what the ECC, Osaku sees as uh, social studies. The same thing, then the Apushato on its own ceases as a bridge connecting societal and environmental issues. Fostering new approach and solutions for effective effective problem solving. Also, I mean, I push out so on its on its own is looking at a society from the perspective of social problems. Anything that helps us now to navigate through finding solutions to societal problem, anything that gives us the the bridge now connecting this from this problem to this solution. What helps us to find solution to this problem? Because definitely solutions, I mean, problems are paramount in the society. So anything that helps us to navigate through it, anything at all that helps us to navigate through the approach we use, the strategy we use, there are challenges, uh, the strategy you use in solving it, anything that helps you in getting that problem. So the societal issue, societal problem, that is what it is as 
social studies that is by Akosha to now also quay on his own see social study as nurturing environment where individuals grow and develop acquiring positive knowledge attitudes values and skills necessary for contributing positive society so that he sees it as the, your upbringing what brought you up every impacted virtues in you every impacted natures in you anything they inject into you that now brought you up in the right channel of that very environment where you are anything that that's the for instance the education they give you the cultural values they give you the traditional instincts they give you the intellectual capacity you're able to get from your parents, anything at all that makes you, that is what Osaku sees at sociology. You can see, I mean, social studies, you can see attitudes, your values, your skills, anything at all necessary for you to become competent, human, and effective. And the essence is that you should be able to contribute positively to your society. You see, Osaku's definition is quite encompassing, okay? Now, the next one is Sunjo Kansundi. Who see social, social studies as a vast landscape where learners explore and gather knowledge to understand the influences shaping human societies? He, they are basically they are basically seeing it as where we are right now as a school, a school like a study group, like a study venue where people are learning about how to understand their environment, how they influence themselves, how the, the, the community interact with them and they interact with the community and vice versa, they build a good environment. So that is what they are seeing as social studies. That is the gathering, the vast landscape where people are sitting. Now there is a teacher that are learners. So the teacher is teaching students some things. The learners are also indirectly impacting the teacher. So anything that goes in between the teacher and the learner. That's what Njo Kansong this is as sociology. Now, Mizu Biozai and Young also says, sociology as a blueprint outlining important knowledge, skills, services, and actions for individuals, guiding society in shaping students' relationships with others. Now, students' relationship with others, their world, and themselves. Now, look at the relationship we are looking at, interrelationship now, that is between me and you, right? between you and the world at large and now between myself as in within myself now so anything that is the skill that i have the the knowledge that the cultural values that i have the attitude that i'm, I'm, I'm being, I, I was able to bring bro, i was brought up with anything that makes me now to effectively relate effectively relate that shapes my relationship with my friend that shapes my relationship with my church that shapes my relationship also as a person now uh, within myself that build my personality. That's what they are. Uh, this they consider to be sociology. Then Ezebi also sees like sociology to factory producing good citizens as valuable products with the objective of benefiting Nigeria society's good. It's just like let, let, I, I, I will term that as a family. It is as a factory, okay? Like, like they, they put you in a factory, and what's the factory doing? They are injecting into you values. They are injecting into you values. They are injecting into you some values that are necessary for you to represent Nigeria well, to create values in you, and those values are to make you relate with the outside world perfectly. That's what is we say. So you can read about the Falwang and Dan, the Dan ladies uh, also. But generally speaking, there are some keywords that you can pick from these definitions. Number one, social studies touches other field of study. It is an inter interdisciplinary field of study in the sense that it's a, it's, 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 a, it's an human in uh, uh, it's a, a concept is a definition that. It's not limited to science. It's not limited to economics. It's not limited. It is interdisciplinary. It touches other discipline. You understand? It is dynamic because when we are talking about human being, human being features prominently in sociology. Human being features prominently in anthropology. 
Human being features prominently in political science. Human being features prominently in economics. Okay, so that's the reason social study as a field now or, and as a definition is interdisciplinary. Okay, it's combined efforts. It combines relationship between this field, this field, this woman, this society, this society, this society, this society, and all of that. Okay, and the essence is to equip you with certain skills, problem solving skills, intellectual skills, certain social sociocultural skills that will make you the better person that you should be in the society. Number one, it is interdisciplinary field of study. Number two, it integrates various subjects such as anthropology, economics and all of that. And number three is that the main essence, the main reason, the focus of social studies is to cultivate competence in you and to make you a civic human being in your society. It's, it's to make you not be a handicap, it's to make you not to be a destitute in your, in your environment, it's to make you a whole useful individual in your society. That is the essence of social studies. Now, let's go through what then is social study education. And as we said, the same way we do not have generally accepted definitions of social study, the same thing applies to social study education. There are lots of definitions. Okay, you can read you can read all of them here. But in summary, this definition showcase the multifaceted nature of social study education, emphasizing its role in understanding human behavior. Now we talked about social studies interrelationship between this person and that person. This person and his, and his environment, the environment and this person, then the person is now exhibiting some characters, some skills, some competencies in solving certain problems. Now, when we are talking about social study education, we are bringing it home, we are bringing it former. It, it, it's now becoming like a program. It's becoming like, a, a, um, let me see, like a box where those skills are documented and they are being, they are institutionalized and passed from one stage to the other. Now, when, when we're talking about social study education, we are bringing it from, just as I said, where I, I'm sitting right as, as somebody that, ha that, that has the knowledge about social studies, so I'm, I'm putting some things down in terms of a program, I'm putting some things down in terms of, in terms of skills, I'm putting some things down, so I'm making it like a document now. I'm making like a skill acquisition program that then people can go through it and be equipped to be a civic individual in the society, be a civic, be civic individuals in the society and be useful to the society. Now, it's just a, it's, it's a field that emphasizes human relationships with its social, economy, political, whatever, 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 for, a, for effective acquisition of knowledge, attitudes, values, and skills for personal societal needs and aspirations. No, we, we do we do know what social studies implies by virtue of the key concept that I explained here. That it is interdisciplinary, right? It's the main objective is to cultivate competence, okay, and human responsible citizens. Okay. Now when we are designing this now into a program, when we are designing it into we, we, we are we are we are coordinating it now and we are making it like a formal system of impacting from one person to the other, this skill, then we are talking about social study education. I that, that just as I said here. There are different definitions to which I expect you to kind of read. For example, according to NCSS, this is an integrated study of social sciences and humanities to promote civic competencies. Now look at the keywords now, civic competencies. That is the essence of the program. It's, it's, it's it, an integrated study. It's, it has become a study now of how we relate. We have studied, we have studied it, and the essence of studying it is for us now to be able to define it, define it, promote, I mean, create it as a program that can now help to promote. Let me say, for example, we have we have this unwritten constitution as parents in our respective families. We have it as, I can call it, I can call it family children or bringing education right now and the, and that says that immediately your children are woken up in the morning the first thing they do is to greet their parents or the and their daily ones when they are done you said okay once you're done the next thing is to go do your house chores when you're done with your house chores the next thing is to go do this 
those things are unwritten, but they have become ways of life. Okay, now those things on their own differently they are social studies now when you now tailor it and you impact it into the children in such a way that when they woke, when they are woke, when they wake up in the morning the first thing that comes on their head is yeah we have been so educated to do this to do this so when they also grow up they impact the same in their children when their children also grow so now you realize that it is becoming institution so that is at that level it is becoming social studies education okay i mean it is becoming child their children or bringing education and the same thing applies to social, social, social studies when we are talking about it talks about the man the society the environment becoming useful now when we talk about now impacting it from generation to generation from learner i mean from the teacher to the learner, from the learner to the back to the teacher now, from the teacher to the learner to the environment to the society now, and the old essence is that we want to have the civic competence in each and every one of us. That's a, that is at that point we are now talking about social study, social science education, because it is becoming a wholesome box now where knowledge can be transmitted from one person to the other, okay? Now, let's look at what are the goals of social studies education. Generally speaking, it helps us to understand our place in the world, right? It, it, makes, it makes our personality, our unique personality very, very obvious. It builds us into who we are supposed to be, right? It's, it brings in our social understanding. It brings in us certain things that will make us function very well in our society. Okay? Now, according to Mizubi and Fubara, there are basically seven goals of social studies. Number one is knowledge and information goals. And what that is saying is that social studies will help us to have historical events. It helps us to know where we are coming from, where we are, the impact we can make in our society, and why, um, how we can continue to sustain that or make a change. This goal is seeing social studies as something that helps us to understand where we are coming from where we are and where we are going, basically. Okay? We use that social studies education is to help us have a didactic or knowledge or information about ourselves. We are Nigerians, we know where we are coming from, we know where we are, and it will now help us to shape us to know where we are going. Another point is for social political activism to arouse in us that activism spirit is when we know what is right then we'll be able to stand for what is right in spite of what others are doing right we can bring you as an individual dump you among animals now when we put you among animals the social studies knowledge will now help you to know that let me separate the male animal from the female let me separate the hood from the young ones so that the young ones don't don't suffer in the hands of the the bullies by the by the uh, the, the adults one let me separate the male from the female to avoid this and all of that now that is what this, this goal is talking about, it is bringing about social activism, social political activism in us, so that we'll be able to stand up and fight for what is right. Okay, This goal intends to make people, students, clients, active social political participants in their environment. No, you are not the type now that sits down. If you remember, I give you an, I give you an idea where everybody sits down, they start accusing a particular set, a particular region of Nigeria. You stand up right there and make the difference that why no you, we are thinking wrongly. So what about this side? What is about this side? So that is what this goal is talking about. And that is the reflective thinking goal. The goal of social studies is to make you think and think think far, far more than the periphery, beyond the surface. When people come up with issues, when there are challenges, you have you have capacity to analyze information, you have capacity to dissect information, you have capacity to call this party, call this party, then dissect the whole thing, then come up with a creative 
conclusion. It is not it's not to bring out in you the dummy parts, the dummy side of a human being. It's to refine you and bring out of you the thinking capacity. Okay. The next thing is affective goal. The social studies, this goal now says that it is to help us have values for our society. It makes us to have an empathy for our society, just like we have in Nigeria here. You go to some places where they are talking down on your community, then you stand up, no, you can't talk down on my community like that. And why are you standing up? Because of the empathy, because of the affection you have for your community. Now, social study injects in you the values that makes you appreciate, the values that make you appreciate your society, so that you'll be able to stand for your society wherever you go. That's the reason you see, they'll say, okay, patriotism, that's where patriotism comes in, okay? The next one is citizen transmission goal. Making citizens to understand the social economic competencies and everything about citizens in is suggested with this goal and it fosters an appreciation of for cultural diversities okay it's respect for difference and all of that so in, in the class i give i give an idea i give an illustration where i am an Aousa person you are an Igbo person this person as is is a yoruba person but we are cohabiting and we have a way of transmitting our cultural values from one you know i give you an, an idea of of social study education as using another illustration which is by family let me say children of bringing education right now I, I, I was brought up in one way and that is i should respect the, the elders when i see two elders talking i shouldn't stay there let alone having contribution when i'm not invited when i'm when i wake, wake up in the morning the first thing i do is to greet my parents and the elderly ones after that, I should do my house chores. When I see an elderly person coming with load, I should. So those are the facts. Those are the cultural values they've been able to inject into me. Now, social study. This by this goal now. By this goal, it says that social studies now help you to be able to transmit that citizenship characters from one stage to the other. Now, it makes you to have respect for this person's own, and it helps you to have respect for this person's own. Okay, now it helps you to now have it transmissive from one person to the other. We now know uniquely that Igbos dress this way, Aousas dress this way, Yorubas dress this way, and we respect ourselves in that light. It makes us appreciate them, then they appreciate us as well. The next one is put yourself enhancement goal. That is for you to know the importance of you being committed to, to your society. It helps you take your place in the society. It helps you make input in the society. The next one is skill goals and all of that. So other goals are social skills and health. So let's look at the next one is the characteristics of social study education, right? Characteristics of social study education. And this is according to Mezobi, right? I keep saying it according to, according to. So when you see when you see it in the in the in the exam question, you'll be required to say according to. Okay, when you are asked according to, then you know that you have to streamline your answer to the concept of the person. Character characteristics of social study education. Number one. It's social to see knowledge and man's social world as integral to education. Okay, it's it sees education as a core between man and the environment. Now, this education now in, it could be formal education, it could be informal education, it could be cultural education. Okay, but the point is that it sees it as education that is transmissive. It is not just something that you have, they impact this thing into you, you impact it into others. That is where education comes in. Okay? It sees this human knowledge now and your society, your environment. It sees that an education, how we are transferring cultural values. And when you get to that place, that's this is the way they behave. There's no constitution stating that they should act that way. But you now realize that it seems they have been able to so build themselves in that way. That is this what this place is. Social study education is is it sees man and knowledge as education. Like there is something unwritten somewhere, some unwritten education going on between man, going on between the knowledge, going on between human human beings within the environment. They are passing certain skills, certain virtues one from the other. 
that character is always there and that is unlike animals okay the next one is that social study adopt the integr in, in, integrative approach to knowledge by fusing or blending relevant content concepts methods and generalizations drawn from other related disciplines as we said it is an indis it is an interdisciplinary field right it draws concepts from different fields to now come up with its own approach integrative approach you integrate this you integrate from right to left, from left to right, and all of that. The next one is that social studies in all parts of the world is largely societal relative or societal specific. And as I explained before, social studies is about a society. Now, society is about you, you are about society. How you relate to society and how society relates with you. Okay, then what comes out of it? How we able to interrelate and make things happen? The good thing, the good thing anyway. So what's how we are relating? It is not. It's not. It, is, it doesn't have to do with animals. It has to do with society. That is what this character is talking about. It is largely society. I mean, it's largely society related. That is society specific. We are talking about the culture. Of human being, right? And we can't be talking about society when we are not talking about human beings. So that is what social studies is all about. Okay, it's socially and society sensitive in terms of looks at their culture, looks at how they respect their culture, looks like how they transfer culture one from the other. Also, another point is that it emphasizes classroom without wall. I said that there are unwritten constitutions, unwritten cultural values, unwritten cultural education or traditional education that we are passing one from the other to the from one to another. It could be negative also, mind you, like you, you are taught to hate some religion and you keep passing it, okay? You were taught to, to hate some tribes. You keep passing it, okay? So that is what it, that place is implying. It's, it emphasizes classroom without walls. That's informal education. That is social study because it goes on and on and on and on. That's the reason the friends of my parents are my friends automatically. Why the enemies of my parents? automatically become my enemy. Why? Because I was taught to be, to, to, to feel, to, to follow suit. Another point is that so, social studies program is activity leading, activity leading. It has to do with interaction. And when we are interacting, you don't just sit inactive. You, you act, it is activity leading and predominantly continue, con contains activities, knowledge to be acquired and fact to be stored, okay? Now, it is activity led in the sense that it's, when we are talking about interaction, it, ac interactions are activities, okay? That is what they are saying that it is act activity led in. In view of the fact that social studies content are learner activity based involving the near total control of the learning to share by learning situation by the learner in his own do it and all those things. Okay. The next the main objective of social studies is to produce responsible and participatory citizens and all of that. I think I've talked about that. Is evaluation focus criteria focus primarily or principally on the effective domain values and attitudes. I talked about that cultural values is the key that the social studies trying to understand how they relate and how that it is not all teaching methods and techniques that, that lend themselves to the effective teaching and learning of social studies the key thing that we're talking about here is that it is interdisciplinary so you, no one can come to tell you that this is social studies it's 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 social, it's it's it is science it is this because we say that it is interdisciplinary it connects other fields, then we, we learn from them. Now let's look at what are the scores of social study. As, as I said in the class, we talk, we're talking about man, we're talking about environment. Now we are talking about how the both are interrelated. Okay, so that is majorly the scope, man, the society, and the relationship between these two, right?
man society society that i'm still talking it could be the environment now this is man this is our society so how they are interrelating now for the betterment of that society that is what that's all about the school of edu um, social study education so in the exam or i may tell you okay explain the concepts on the scope of social study the three core social studies education school this is man the society and the interrelationship existing between them or among them then you explain for that there cannot be a man without society and a man could mean a family a man could mean an institution a man could mean this could imply this now how they are interrelating now in the society and now that's what we're talking about now mizubi stated that scope of social studies refers to the content of subject matter skills values attitudes that have been seen or can be included in social studies program when we're talking about social study education, you know, I was telling you it's like a program that is designed now to make sure that this particular skill, this particular competence is passed one from the other, this generation to another generation, this from this learner, I me mean from the teacher to the learner, right? So is this Mesiobi is seeing it as what those things that we included in that social study program is those are the those are what it she turned as the scope that is what are the areas of the scope i mean the, the, the areas of social study education number one the content and the content in this sense implies the teachings that are going on in that society is tailored specifically to a particular society when we are studying that's the scope now you know, we said that I basically brought two, three out, man, right? His relationship with the environment. No, man is environment. Then the relationship he has with the environment. Those are the key things. Man, the environment, and the relationship happening between them. Now, we can't be talking about social study education when we are not being specific. Which area are we looking at? We are looking at Nigeria. But then we can go further. Which area in Nigeria we are looking at? We are looking at the Yoruba. So that is what this place is, this place is talking about. As per the scope, it is tailored to a specific society. Okay? The content will be tailored to a specific society. Another point is that social studies does not believe in superstition. It is all, always it relies solely on what is on ground. We are talking about human being interrelating here. We are not talking about ghosts, right? So it believes on the physical availability of certain skills and all that. The next one is social study program is drawn from social sciences, inter interdisciplinary fields and all that, humanities and all that. The last one is see the syllabus of social studies is flexible and it accommodates new trends. We are talking about human being. The only thing that is permanent is change, right? So the field being the study of the relationship between man and the society now accommodates new trends. This isn't the way we used to dress before. This isn't the way we used to grip before. We are evolving. We are evolving. Now you want to ask that, okay, in my in my locality, there is a way we usually celebrate this particular festive period but things are changing things are changing and we have to change with with the dynamism going on in the environment government is intervening technology is taking shape our students our children are going to school now they are imbibing new cultures so the syllabus of social study we inculcate all of that because it's a field that builds that is built on man so it accommodates any dynamism coming on. So the next topic I will be looking at is nation building. And in talking about nation building, I said that there is no way we can talk about nation building without looking at the word itself, nation. Now, when you're talking about nation, we are talking about the environment where we have human being dominating. Mind your word, 
it is an environment it must be physical environment i'm not talking about spiritual, spiritual environment now it must be physical in the sense that there is a landscape that we must see and we must see human being occupying the landscape before we can call it a nation and now there are cultural values there are values there are characters that we, that are that are critical that we are looking at for in a nation okay now let's quickly look at components of a nation okay okay let me let's look at definitions right definitions of what a nation is a, a nation is a relatively large group of people residing within a distinct geographical area distinct geographical area that's called one distinct geographical area the next one is relatively large group of people we are not talking about one person or two persons a relatively large you can't be telling me you are a man and a woman and you are occupying a whole land space and you call yourself a nation you are not yet a nation at least have children join you and let your children also have children then we can start talking about you guys now being a nation okay now it's more there must be a geographic area a large group of people and you guys must be united by some sort of cultural element you must portray some things you must have a unity as per your culture you must have a unity as per your tribe your race your religion okay that is then we can talk about you guys being a nation now there are components of nations of a nation rather components of, of a nation key components of a nation as highlighted by Johnson, Robinson and Price. Number one is geographical area. I've talked about the shared identity, the cultural unity. The next one is cohesion and solidarity. You are to be committed, feel among, feel concerned, feel to be together, right? You must, you must be, you must have solidarity. Okay, patriotism must be there. The next one is ancestry and tradition. Ancestry as part, there should be lineage. Where are we coming from? I should know that binds us together. We should have a tradition that we are known for. As a nation, as Nigeria, we do know we were colonized on Toso here. We were colonized here. Then we got freedom here. And we started from there military came in then we transferred to god democratic democratic system yeah those those that's as far as far national talking about culture this is who we are we are black this is the way we dress this is the way we talk and all that the next thing is culture we must have a cultural value a cultural a, a cultural trait that that is uniquely our own and we transfer that anywhere we go we we exhibit that the next thing is religion there should be shared religious beliefs it's, it doesn't have to be all one one religion but the point is that we should be known for a religion and it should be known to have religious beliefs unifying us as a nation just like nigeria nigeria is is so large and god has really been sustainable because we do not have these things to be in one we have them in multiple okay you have this religion you have your religion i have mine and we are cohabiting so very well and that point is component and that component is government and territory that should be leadership who we all agree to make a leader who super who super seeds or who, who supervises every activity administrative activity going on in the, in the environment then the common experiences we have the same historical experiences historical artifacts historical historical uh, background and all that we know where we are coming from it's not that i was brought up here you were brought up there and we are assuming that we have no we do not have an infusion of culture okay now when we're talking about nation building it's like a concept that has to do with how do people seek to getting their nation develop over time they were here before we want them hope in the next two three years that is nation building what are the things they are putting in place to make sure that they are growing from where they were before to a new place okay 
You know, there are different definitions of nation building too. Mbaku sees it as concerted effort to bring people together for the purpose of achieving objective goals. Achieving objective goals now is to develop. The same thing applies to Barabe, it's solely that instrumental sustainability of a nation in order to ensure its functional now. This is the word longevity. Longevity, why this one is talking pop for the purpose of achieving common objectives. This objective was hidden here, but the main objective is also longevity or it's also development, it's, it's growth. It's for them to be able to move from one area to the other, to the to the new level, okay? Now, let's just, and the same thing, the same, also see it as collective effort. Collective effort, right? Here, okay. then we're talking about concerted effort here, right? Now, we're talking about the solid and instrumental, the solid and instrumental sustainability of a nation. Sustainability of the nation, who does sustain us? The human being as well. Now, from this definition, we can see that nation building is a concerted and collective effort by people living within a geographical area. And the essence is for them to bring about development in their society, fostering a sense of common objective, solidarity, and nation building. Okay? The main objective of nation building is to elevate the nation. And who are the nation? The people. Who are the people? People that are living in that society. What are you looking out for? What are you looking out for in them? How they are living? The quality of life they are living. It could be their, their cultural values. How did they develop over time as technology has come, has, has come? So how did they develop over time economically? Were they still, are they still at the same position where they were 10 years ago? So that is what we are talking about. The goal of a nation building is to elevate people. That is what we keep asking our, our government. Where did you take us? Where did you meet us? And where are you leaving us? We are still where we are. Some, somehow we are even getting worse every day. So which means that there is no nation building, right? Now, what are the key concepts, the essentials of nation building? Number one is that it's, 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 there must be a concerted effort. Number two, there must be solidarity. Solidarity as per unity, that I must have a commitment to my to my nation. Then another point is sustainability. That sustainability now implies our capacity to maintain and endure over time certain values, certain concepts for the sake of passing it from one generation to the other, right? Now, incremental development. Incremental development as you we must be moving from A to B before we can talk about us being uh, having a nation building. The last one is collective agreement. We must have a unanimous agreement of having leaders. A unanimous, a unanimous agreement of having a religion, of having a, a, a language and all of that, okay? Now, looking at Nigeria as a nation, Nigeria as a nation, now, that one is talking about horse, you know, we are bringing it home now, the concept of like, nation and the nation, the concept of nation building. Now, in Nigeria, that talks about how did you come by the events that produced Nigeria from the history to where we are today. What are the developmental processes we have experienced? Then we start talking about the history of Nigeria independence, in history of our leaders, or history of our transmission from this government, federal government, I mean, federal, I mean from military to democracy, then in democracy from social government to social government, what development happened and what development is going to happen or what development is happening right now, okay? That is, when you are told to examine Nigeria as a nation, that place you just talk about the history of Nigeria, how are we coming in terms of nation building? I can, I can tell you, observe the concept of Nigeria as a nation using your idea of a nation and nation building. Okay? Then you talk about, there is no way you can talk about Nigeria without talking about Nigerians. Okay? Now, Nigerians dominated the particular land space of that. It is then we use because of that we are tender as Nigeria and not animals. Now we have this character, we have this character, we have religion, we have tribe, we have culture, we have language, we have uh, we have cultural values that we exhibit that that we exhibit from one tribe to the other and we are poverty. So all those factors you keep jogging them and coming up with them, okay?
Yeah, a lot of activities took place within the period of Nigeria starting where we were before the name of Nigeria was formed and after the name of Nigeria, as in before our independence and after our independence. So when we are looking at those events, then we are looking at the concept of Nigeria as a nation, the makeup of Nigeria as a nation. So in the next video, I'll be talking about the school of thought in nation building. I'll, I'll be talking about the theories in nation building and, and a host of them, okay? Thank you very much. Please download and share the video. Possibly if you have any comments, you can drop it. Thank you.